Welcome back to California Cooking. The Academy Awards are this weekend and we're celebrating. In the spirit of the Oscars, we have three awards to give out today. The first is for the most iconic LA diner from films and TV shows. The second award goes to the most crave-worthy dish featured in this year's nominated films. And the third goes to the most crowd-pleasing appetizer for your Oscar party. Let's start with the award for the most iconic diner in LA. Most film buffs recognize the 101 coffee shop from the cult classic Swingers. Just a few months ago, this Hollywood landmark reopened under a brand new name, Clark Street Diner. I got to sit down with the new owner, Zach Hall, and learn all about how he revived this iconic Hollywood spot. Take a look. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, thank you so much for coming. Oh my gosh, this is a happening lunch spot. Yeah, it's busy. Yeah, I, you know what I always think, and I think people associate this with like the diner vibe, it's something like, I don't know, there's something comforting about walking into a busy diner. For sure. Right? Yeah. What is I mean, it's like a, a traditional American yeah. food. It's something that we all know yeah. and um, love and uh, have certain connections to. But uh, yeah, the diner is definitely a lively place, a casual place. Crazy that we opened or that we took over a diner. Yeah. You know, if you would have asked me last time we, we saw we each spoke, other, which was, well, I don't there know, a year no, and a half ago. Yeah, maybe? there was no plans. Yeah. Yeah. And here you are. Um, now you've got what? Is this maybe your fourth spot? Number five. Five. Yeah. And then we've got two more like in the next couple months. But like, how do, you, how do you do it? I feel, excuse me. <laughs> All I nap. <laughs> <laughs> no, we just keep, uh, you know, jumping in opportunities and yeah, trying to do, do good. And we first met you as a baker. And that was your main gig. Yeah. And now, you know, you got a whole menu going on. Yeah. What's that been like for you? Um, challenging for sure, um, exciting. Um, what's nice is that like the food that we serve at the cafes is sort of like a smaller version of diner food. You know, we serve bacon and eggs and like uh, breakfast sandwiches and stuff like that. And so it wasn't like a leap. It's not like I'm cooking like an ethnic cuisine like that I have no experience with, you know? And it's all new to me. Um, but still, there was a lot of stuff that we had never made before, had the recipe test and, uh, and dial it in. I think it's easy in one way because the diner concept is sort of like hammered out. Like everybody knows what to expect. The difficult part was just like getting there, you know? Just just making the dishes look and taste how you expect them to. You know, you just look, it's like you gotta have a tuna melt on the menu. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got your club sandwich, burgers, yep. pancakes, waffles, all that stuff. Yep. But like, done. And then, you know, all the bread is obviously from the bakery, yes. which is cool. This, I think if anybody is around, in and around Hollywood, driven past this place a million times, right by the 101 freeway, it used to be the 101 coffee shop which is iconic, right? Yeah. It's been around since the 60s. You know that you're not the only person who uses that word, iconic? Yeah, like, is that how people, it's described? Yeah, I would say like nine out of 10 people when talking about it use the word iconic. And so we kind of ran with it. We put like iconic on t-shirts and made like a neon sign because like the, the catchphrase was sort of like just handed to us, you know, it was easy. Yeah. And so yeah, you know, now Clark Street Diner is iconic. When we first decided to jump into this place, super nervous just to like live up to people's expectations. There's a lot of people who were coming here for, two, you know, the 101 was open for 20 years. And some of them came here not just every single day, but like for like breakfast and lunch. And so you just simply don't want to disappoint, right? Nervous, but so far so good. Was there something that people that are regulars to the 101 coffee shop said you have to keep on the menu? We mostly stuck to like a traditional, I mean, it's a, it's a traditional diner menu, but what we did was we worked with some, some vendors, some partners who we really liked. Like we for sure were gonna keep it, you know, diner food, stuff that people are familiar with but we were gonna use ingredients that were that we felt like we had a connection with, you know? Not just like a random like white flour or something like yeah. that. Um, it's nice to su support somebody who you're friendly with and to buy products that are like either like good for you or, you know, just something you can get behind. What is like the iconic idea of Hollywood, of a Hollywood diner? Movies have been shot here. I really romanticize old Hollywood. For me, it's like I'm so proud to be from here and to have that as part of like the, you know, the work, you know, history of, of whatever, Los Angeles, you know? My grandfather was born in Los Angeles County as well. And so when he got out of the army, he moved back here and he got a job in a movie theater. 
um, as the guy who just like loaded the film into the camera. The story goes that one day, uh, Sam Goldman came into his movie theater to check on things, whatever, and goes to my grandfather, uh, you know, with a face like yours or a build like yours, whatever, he's a good looking guy. Um, you know, you should be in front of the camera, not behind it. Yeah. And so they signed him to a 10 movie deal. Yeah, at, at, at Goldwyn. Before even that, he was a busboy at uh, Musso and Franks. Okay, of and he, course. And he used to serve Charlie Chaplin, Groucho oh. Marx. Yeah. So like for me, I, I love the movie yeah. his aspect of, of the whole thing. Your cute mom was just here. Yeah, yeah. And she is, she's, she brought her friend for lunch. And she's like, this is my son, I support him. She was showing us pictures of you when you were younger. Yeah, typical <laughs> Jewish mother stuff. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I said, did you I'm surprised you're able to be here with me sitting at the booth and you're not getting dragged around I know. by my mom, you know? Yeah, hearing all the um, childhood stories. Yeah, mom, mom was born and raised in LA. Okay, so she, uh, how, did, how? what did she think about this venture for you then? Uh, she just is always like, are you okay? What do you need? Yeah. Can I make you some chicken soup? Like, I don't know. She's just always like worried that I'm over overloaded. But yeah, she actually grew up right by here in West Hollywood. Went to Fairfax High. Really? Um, yeah, so she's a local girl. Well, your mom said, my boy, he, he needs to be on camera. She just said that about us. He, she's like, he's made for this. My, my wife knows that I don't like being on camera. <laughs> You're, you are good at it. No, I like to talk, but I don't like to be on camera. <laughs> This is exactly what I want when I come to a diner. And we're back. Breakfast and we're back. <laughs> this is what I would get for breakfast at a diner. Yeah, hands this down. is what I get. And I'm noticing a few things. Perfect eggs, crispy potatoes, crispy bacon, yep. fluffy pancakes. It's, it's Nailed it. It's iconic. This is the uh, the diner breakfast. Yeah. Okay, and then this. Huevos Rancheros. Yes. And then the bread is from the bakery. The buns from the bakery. The hall is from the bakery. Um, now that's something your mom said she did make. Yeah, yeah. She made hala. Yeah. The, she was a uh, Stephen Weiss mother, <laughs> and there was like a, you know, a course for all sure. the moms. There might have been some dads too, okay. but yeah, all the moms learned how to make hala. Yeah, I like, said, what did you teach your son? She's like, hala and chocolate chip cookies. Right. She had she had it down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lunch item Fried over chicken here. sandwich, yeah. Yeah. That, that I was really excited about. Yeah. Just because one of my favorite foods is fried chicken. Oh, yeah. And um, after, after work, uh, you know, a nice bottle of champagne with some fried chicken oh is very... Oh my gosh, I like how you think. Yeah, we, we can hang out sometime, Yeah. Okay? Well, I'll definitely be back. Okay. Bring, I'll bring the fam. Okay, great. Yeah. I'll bring my kids too. They can make a mess and, and disturb the people sitting next to them, you know? Exactly. We try to be the family that cleans up after we leave, but... It's too hard. You know how that goes. It's too hard. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, okay. That was the first time I've ever been to that diner. What a great spot. It's got all the classics. Coming up, we have more awards to give away on this Oscar episode of California Cooking. One is for a party appetizer that is sure to be a hit with your guests on Oscar Sunday. But first, it's a dish featured in the Oscar-nominated film Encanto. I'm learning how to make arepas con queso. Coming up next. The Disney movie Encanto has been nominated for three Oscars. The film, along with the music, is so much fun. Honestly, one of my favorite movies this year. But I think the food featured in the film deserves a little recognition as well. I learned how to make arepas con queso with a Colombian-born chef living here in LA. Take a look. Andres, how are you? I'm good, Jessica. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for welcoming us to your kitchen. My pleasure. This is cool. So the concept behind this, when I first walked up, I thought, okay, I see I see some lockers yeah. with numbers on them, but this is the whole concept of ghost kitchens now, right? Right, yeah, exactly. So we're basically a kitchen and we make the food yeah. just for takeout or delivery. Right. And that uh, allows us to be super creative and be able to offer more things that, are, that just one specific restaurant would be able to. Yeah. Uh, and then that way we reach more people. Yeah. And do you ever see yourself going back to like brick and mortar restaurants? Absolutely not. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so when did you move from Colombia? Uh, 2009, I believe. Yeah. So I moved to Chicago first okay. and I was there for four or five years and then I moved to LA. You know, is there a big uh, kind of Colombian 
community here when you moved to LA? There is a big Colombian culture here. There's some uh, really good uh, Colombian restaurants around. It's it's hard to find good Colombian food, but over over time, over the years, I've noticed that oh, this is this is tasting more like home. The, the Oscars are coming up. I think Encanto has stolen the hearts of people, and it's a movie for those who haven't seen it. It's on Disney. It's an animated film, but it's based on a Colombian family in Colombia. Yeah. And you said that was so special to you. You don't have kids. And I said, do you have kids? Is that why you watch it? You're like, no, it's a, a movie about Colombians. And I had to see it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, as I was telling you, like, we're used to the uh, movies or certain shows showing uh, a different side of Colombia, right? Something way in our past. And the fact that this Disney's, this like monster yeah. of a production company came out and made um, a movie about Colombia. It was so exciting. Regardless if you have kids or not, if you're Colombian, you want to see. And what was incredible to me was how accurate everything in the movie really? is. Like the, the, the mannerisms, the way they say things, the way that they point at things, like everything, like it was, that's Colombia. No. That is a pure Colombian person. In the movie, um, you know, all of the family has gifts or talents that they have. And one of the characters, she makes arepas con queso mm -hmm. and it heals someone. Yeah. It's a healing property in her arepas. And it's mentioned a couple times in the movie. Yeah. So unfortunately, the arepa doesn't have magical powers right. itself. <laughs> Not in real life. <laughs> the character, yeah. uh, her power is that she heals through food. Yeah. And uh, great to see that she uses um, an arepa con queso to heal. I believe it's a, it's a wound in the hand yeah. of Maribel. And uh, so arepas are super important for us in Colombia. Um, I think that it, it dates like 3,000 years. I read that this could be something served with coffee in the morning. Oh, snack. absolutely. Is it all time? It is day? an incredible, versatile um, item, food. Yeah. Uh, we have it as breakfast, we have it as a snack, we have it as a side dish for an entree. And we have like close to 100 different types of arepas really? in Colombia. Okay. So the one that we're making today is one of my favorites, it's uh, the arepa con queso. Yeah. Uh, but you have ones that are not stuffed with, with anything. Okay. Some are like deep fried and have an egg inside. Ah. They're everywhere. It's yeah. just part of who we are in our, our daily lives. Okay, Andres, what, tell me how you make your arepa. We take more or less equal parts of that flour, of the corn flour, and mix it with um, water, butter, and salt. Okay. For this amount, I'm gonna do around a tablespoon of salt. I wanna dilute the salt about a quarter cup of melted butter, and then the corn though. That's pretty much it. Yeah. And then we just mix that with our hands, or we can just grab a spatula if okay. we don't get, we don't want to get too dirty. Right. You start with that and then get your hands in there. Do you remember these as a kid, someone making them in your household? Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Like, again, this is present in every single day of our lives. When, if it's not a, during breakfast at home, it's in school as a snack or going to college before you go in in the morning, you oh grab one from the vendor on the right. street cart. That came together really easy, yeah. And you wanna let it rest about five minutes just to make sure that the corn is well hydrated. Okay. That's pretty much it. Now we let it rest five minutes, yeah. just give it some time to um, hydrate. So basically you want to make a ball. Okay. Kids would love to make these. Yeah. Because it does feel like Play-Doh. Play-Doh. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to make like a patty like that. Then okay. you grab a piece of cheese. And what kind of cheese is this? So I'm we're using just a good mozzarella. I guess uh, in Colombia we would go for a paipa or a queso pera, which okay. is very like mozzarella. But you gotta make sure probably it doesn't ooze out, right? Well, actually or... you kinda do and you don't. Ah. Because when you're cooking it you kind of want some of that cheese to ooze out and caramelize and it yes. becomes crunchy okay. and it's delicious. So if it happens, it's a happy accident. It's a very, it's almost like you want it to happen. Yeah, that so, was fun. I like making these. Yeah, so that's basically yeah. it. Yeah. Let's cook the ones that we just made. So you want a, a griddle, a flat cooking surface, or yeah. even a grill that is like medium low temperature. So we're going to do a generous amount of butter. That's it, butter. And then we put them here. I, I I like the butter, like arepas and butter, Yeah, it's it's a must. So we want to let this cook probably around five minutes per side. This was a long 10 minutes to wait. I'm sorry. It's hard to watch these bubble and cook in butter. And yeah, but just, it's worth the wait. It's worth the wait. I'm just going to transfer these over, this one with the Happy cheese accident. Uh -huh. Or we have two different sauces okay. that we can eat them with. I 
would normally go for it without any sauce. If you want a little bit of heat, you would go with this one, ahi, or you could go with ogao that has the stewed tomatoes, onions, and buttery sauce. But there's a, there's a catch. You must wait a second or you will burn the roof of your mouth. Yes, because that cheese inside is very hot, it's melty, it's, it, it, it can be painful. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so good. It's like a garlicky tomato. Yeah. What's this one again? Ahi. I almost couldn't decide which yeah, one I like more. It's what? like, it depends on what mood you're in. Now it's... that I learned how to make Colombia's signature dish, I'm gonna do it. Cool. I'm gonna do it. These are so good. Thank, Thank you, Andre. Thank you, absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Now you can see why those arepas con queso got my vote. So good and easy to make. Coming up, a party appetizer worthy of an award on this Oscar episode. I'm showing you how to make crispy rice with spicy tuna. The third and final award goes to a crowd-pleasing appetizer for your Oscar party. Check out how I make my crispy rice with spicy tuna. One of the restaurants in LA where you are sure to see a celebrity is Nobu Malibu. I have never been. It's very hard to get a reservation. It is one of the most beautiful restaurants in Los Angeles, right on the ocean. And famous people, they flock to it. And one of the owners is Robert De Niro. Oscar winning Robert De Niro. And there's a recipe on the menu, the crispy rice spicy tuna that people rave about. So I'm going to save us hundreds of dollars and make it here with a few cheats from the grocery store. This is super simple. You know how you go to the fish market or you go to the fish counter at the grocery store and they have poke? I got some spicy poke, tuna poke, and I got some regular tuna poke. So I'm gonna mix spicy and regular to kind of get a blend. If you don't have a grocery store near you that has the poke, you can also just buy a tuna steak and just add flavorings. Add some sriracha, some sesame oil, scallions, and do the same thing. So I pulse just a few times until I break the machine. <laughs> you know what, good enough, it did the job. So that's the consistency you want, where it kind of almost forms a little patty like that if you were to press it between your fingers. For the sushi rice or the sticky rice. You can't use like Uncle Ben's, you know what I mean? It'll fall apart on you. So, so sticky rice is different. It's really sticky. It's the kind of rice they have in sushi and same thing. I went to the sushi guy at the grocery store and I said, can you just give me a bowl of sticky rice? Sure, no problem. I've got a nonstick pan and I'm gonna get that heated up with some coconut oil. So you want enough oil where it coats the bottom of the pan and the whole goal is that the bottom of the rice gets that crispy, crunchy, brown texture. This is the crispy rice part. The oil has heated up, and now what you wanna do is you press it to where it covers the whole pan, and you're gonna make one fried rice patty. While that cooks, we wanna keep a really close eye on it because you don't wanna burn. I'm gonna make that spicy mayo that goes on top of crispy rice, spicy tuna, and sometimes in your sushi. So this is a Japanese mayo, my girlfriend from Tokyo. She's like, oh, you have to try this mayo. Kewpie, kewpie, it is a little different in the sense that I think it's slightly sweeter than regular mayo, but regular mayo would totally work. And sriracha, that's it. Now you got spicy mayo. Stir that up. If you really like spicy, a lot of times they top it with a thin slice of jalapeno. If you really want to knock people's socks off, you can top it with this as well. Another thing to top our crispy rice spicy tuna avocado. So I cut the avocado in half and I scooped it out one half. And you know how obviously at sushi restaurants, this sushi chefs are absolute pros with knives and it's always so beautiful. I can't possibly do that, but I'm gonna try to make it look as pretty as I can. So I'm gonna get some thin slices of avocado. And in honor of Robert De Niro, I thought this would be the perfect 
little snack while you're watching the Oscars. Time to flip. We go like that. And that took about five minutes on that side. Now we add a little bit more in the way of coconut oil. In it goes. Beautiful. All right, I think we're good. I'm gonna do a flip, because I like that side. Oh yeah, pretty. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it like I'd cut a pie. Yeah, there we go. Now to top with our spicy tuna. Just pile it up however you wanna do it. Let me, jalapeno, sesame seeds, our spicy mayo, and last but not least, I have a scallion here, the perfect Nobu knockoff for your Oscar Sunday. Okay, I'm dying to try this. This is a big bite. Mmm, 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 mmm. Rice is crispy on the bottom, but creamy in the middle. We've got the spicy tuna, the crunch, the creaminess of the mayo. I hope you try it. And Mr. De Niro, if you need an extra hand at Nobu, I'm more than happy to step in. Well, that does it for us. Hope you enjoyed our award ceremony. Happy Oscars. We'll see you next time. Don't be frightened. Oh my gosh! What? Don't be scared. I bet that doesn't happen at Nobu. I think I'm gonna go with the the big breakfast. Did you hear how that sounded when I put it on the table? It is hot though. It is right. hot. Okay, wait. Here, I'll help you with the cheeseful. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah.